Dr. Prager, I think you said that the fusion power may become actually a, you may have a pilot plant in 10 years in your testimony. Elaborate on that. Um, so uh, one grand goal of fusion on a step along the way is to build an energy producing plant. Right. It will produce energy, but it won't make, it's not intended to make net electricity. So there is a goal to do that, to demonstrate that you can make net electricity, produce more electricity than you can consume. So in experiments at Princeton, the design that we're studying in NSTXU, if successful, can offer the possibility of doing that at a somewhat smaller size, not radically smaller, but somewhat smaller scale than the conventional tokamak approach. Would, would that be on site where you are now? No. A, uh, a such a facility would involve tritium handling, which would not best be done in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Okay. Well, um, in 10 years, we could begin the design and construction of such a facility. And there are, this is a, there are other ideas, for example, to use advances in magnets, uh, current magnet technology, also to seek uh, reduced size pilot plants. So this is one p aspiration for the future. Well, that, I mean, you're, you're putting it to the gentleman from Florida's question, but we don't do this in our lifetime. You're putting a 10-year time frame on it, which whether or not it's realistic, but, but that is a goal for us to shoot at, and I'm encouraged to hear that. Yes, and, but just let me clarify, that's not 10 years to a commercial reactor. No, I, I get it. So let me no, no, I, okay. I get it's, that. It's 10 years where we begin the right. design and construction of a pilot. I'm, I'm just hoping my friend from okay. Florida will yeah. still be with us in yes, 10 years. I hope so, too. Yeah, you bet. Um, so that, that, I was glad to hear that. Um, and Dr. Prager, would you support the uh, Department of Energy's development of high-performance computational tools that would be accessible to the researchers in the private sector, academia, and at the national labs to be useful to the fusion community? Do you think that would help shorten that time frame to where we could develop that commercial re uh, energy supply power plant? Absolutely, yes. You know, there's been revolutionary advances in supercomputers that's revolutionizing all of modern science, uh, fusion uh, no less than any other. So with the supercomputing capabilities, uh, we can design concepts and test them on the computer and advance them in ways that we couldn't possibly do before. And there are new ideas on the table because of that. It's also, I might say, critical for us in terms of interpreting ITER results. We, we need this advanced computation to understand as best as we can how ITER will behave. So this is a revolutionary for fusion. Dr. Shu, does that help you? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, I, I should also add that for uh, smaller uh, projects such as innovative concepts, um, the resources generally are, are tough to come by to make use of our computational capabilities. So any assistance on that front would be a, a tremendously useful for innovative concept development. Also in the more inertial, inertial fusion side, uh, access to uh, some of the codes can, can be difficult for people not at the national labs. So okay. making codes uh, more generally available would help fusion energy development. You're working on magnetized target fusion? Yes, that's that, correct. That's part of this, and that would help you in that endeavor? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, and Dr. Go, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, thank you, by the way, for your success, early success as Director General, uh, General and, and setting a time frame and a guideline. We, uh, we really appreciate your efforts in that manner. Um, the fact that you've had success should instill confidence, but how can we help you? What needs to be done to increase the confidence in ITER, that ITER will be on, will continue on that steady pace to realize its goals. What, what are your plans to make sure that as you continue that pace? Um, it's clear that uh, it's a long-term commitment of, for all the uh, seven ITER members. And I do believe that uh, the best uh, would be for the ITER member to uh, have a thorough and open uh, discussion in such a way that uh, any proposal we could make could be uh, forcefully examined and supported. And it's uh, why it is so important that uh, the seven members feel fully committed to support what we call the best technically achievable schedule in such a way that uh, with all the milestones we have now clearly okay, positioned on this road, uh, we have uh, the full support. 
Uh, I really appreciate uh, that you give us the opportunity to uh, make more largely uh, awareness uh, share among all the ITA members about the importance of continuous support. Well, thank you for saying that. And we want you to view this committee as a resource because we want to be a, a source of encour encouragement and resource for you so that anything we can do to, to keep this project moving forward, we want, to be, we want to be able to be helped. And I'm over my time. Thank you again for being here and your testimony. And uh, the chair is going to recognize Alan Grayson.